Hi and welcome to this little island amid the ocean that YouTube is. Lately I have been researching Ukraine's history out of curiosity and in hopes of putting my knowledge to good use I thought of sharing it online. Now due to history complexity I decided to break it down into topics and make a video dedicated to each of them. Today's video is about the first topic, a time prior to Rus. Just a quick disclaimer, I hope to convey some of the most striking historical events of Ukraine and thus spread knowledge of its rich history. All the resources will be linked below and I highly advise you to consult at least some of them. Please also note that I am an independent researcher and I appreciate constructive criticism. Similarly to many countries, what is now sovereign Ukraine witnessed a constant interchange of people, languages and customs. The most known group and the one often mentioned are the Slavs. But prior to the Slavs' migrations and colonization, Herodotus, the Greek historian, provided us with a detailed description of the people who ruled the steppe from around 700 BC to the 4th century AD, the Scythians. According to the historian, geography and ecology determined the dwelling of each group, the structure of the polity and the labor division. Each had different motives, with some producing and providing grain and slaves to the Greeks. And another characteristic of these warriors was the use of poison on their arrows and the making of cloaks or ornaments to their horses with the scalp of their enemies. According to Serhi Plochi, this division that Herodotus described between coast, steppe and forest became one of the main divisions of Ukrainian history. But the Scythian world that Herodotus described came to an end, and the most important factor for their demise was the arrival of a new wave of nomads from the east in the 3rd century BC. These nomads are known as Sarmatians and were a confederation of eastern Iranian nomadic tribes which are believed to have belonged to the larger Scythian cultural group who ruled the Pontic steppe for Alpha Millennium, until the 4th century AD. With the Scythians confined to Crimea, where a new kingdom called Scythian Minor was formed, it is believed they were in the subsequent centuries assimilated by the neighboring Sarmatians, Alans and the early Slavs. The grand migration of the Sarmatians is often questioned, as the narrative is often conflicting, with no ancient texts providing us the story of a contemporary Sarmatian mass resettlement. Ancient authors often contradict each other by qualifying the same ethnic or space-related groups as Sarmatians, but also as Sintian, Masajdan, or simply Nomad. They were composed of different tribes and controlled the area from the Volga in the east to the Danube in the west, eventually reaching the Vistula. Now, the arrival of the Huns provoked the rapid change and cultural deterioration of the area. In AD 375, they conquered the Goths between the Don and the Danube and pushed them towards the Roman borders. Trade relations with the south were cut off and production centers destroyed. From around 500 AD, the terms Slav and Slavic settlement and Slavic cemetery can be used freely since archaeologists are able to demonstrate the continuity of Slavic settlements. The distribution of the early Slav sites is limited to the forest steppe zone in western Ukraine, the steppe zone was avoided as they settled in lands that could be cultivated by a ploth. Their sites usually lie in formerly forested zones. With the Romans extending their influence into the northern shores of the Black Sea in the 1st century BC, they revived some of the former commerce by providing some degree of security to the Greek colonies. Yet, hostilities were permanent. According to Procopius, the Slavs were semi-nomadic, they were not ruled by one man, and everything that involved their welfare was referred to the people. Jordans, an historian of Byzantine origins, distinguishes two major groups among the Slavs, the Sklaveni and Antis. The Sklaveni were found between the Danube and the Dnieper, while the Antis resided in the lands between the Dniester and the Dnieper. During Justician reign, the Slavic menace grew considerably. The Sklaveni poured westward and southward from Slovenia, name of the lands north of the Danube, and they carried heavy shields, spears, bows, and poisoned arrows, yet, according to Procopius, used no armor. They specialized in surprise attacks, and from their homeland they brought knowledge of river navigation. Procopius also describes the cruelty of the Sklavenians during their campaign in Roman lands. The involvement of Byzantium in the wars against the Vandals and the Ostrogoths prevented them from allocating sufficient military forces in the Balkans. 
In order to establish peace in the Balkans, the empire invested on a peace through diplomacy. Integration of the Antis into its service, the empire intended to alter their attacks and form a barrier at the lower Danube against the Slavs and other nomadic tribes such as the Huns. The emperor offered the Huns a city and payments in exchange of peace. They would not attack the empire and they would protect them from the Huns. As they became defenders of the Byzantine Empire in exchange for regular payments, they were granted the status of allies. Then, after the middle of the 6th century, the region occupied by the Slavs was invaded by the Avars. The Avars were a strong and well-organized group of nomad horsemen of Turkic-speaking tribes from the northern Caspian steppes. As mentioned previously, their invasion marks an important phase of Slavic migration and colonization. They destroyed the Antis polity and left horrific memories in the region that would be engraved in the primary chronicle as a traumatic event to the region. After conquering the Antis, who lived north of the Black Sea between the Danube and the Dnieper, the Avars spread beyond the Carpathian Mountains to Central Europe. With the Byzantine Empire threatened by all fronts, it is said that Emperor Tiberius II and Constantine persuaded the first Kagan, Bayin I, to wage war against the Sclaveni who had enriched themselves by plundering Roman lands. The author Cardarus lists some issues and inconsistencies on the Sclaveni and Antis' origin and ethnic identity. While the Antis mentions in written sources is appeared in 602, the Sclaveni became the, sen- the synonym of early Slavs. The typical historiographical view is the identification of the Sclaveni with Western Slavs and the Antis with Eastern or Southern Slavs. Although widely accepted as Slavic, the discussion on the Antis continues as to their Slavic or Caucasian origin. After the Avars came the Bulgars, and after the Bulgars came the Khazars. The Khazars would become the rulers of the Pontic steppes, and with them came the end of the migration era. The Turkic Khazar elite was interested in trade and keen to foreign influences, which can only for- flourish in peaceful times. By the end of the 7th century, they established a relative peace in the region and welcomed Christian missions and Judaism. The Khazars became allies to the Byzantines against the Persian and Arabs, further cementing their position in the area. Archaeology shows us that Kiev came into existence sometime before the turn of the 6th century and it became the Khazars' westernmost outpost in the Ukrainian forest region. With the devastation by the Huns and later by Bulgars and Avars, we find the wide Slavic dissemination. Due to the Slavs doing the colonization while the invaders returned to the plains after their campaigns. As an agricultural people, the Slavs sought an outlet for their population growth, and after being suppressed by the rule of Sintians, Sarmatians, and Goths, they poured out from their territory as the barriers fell to ground. It is also interesting to note that it is presumed that some Slavs participated in the campaigns of the Huns as allies or as pressed auxiliaries. The Slavic invasions ended before the middle of the 7th century and with the Slavic expansion we find an entirely new era in Slavic history, as they colonized an area higher than their homeland territory and the continually increasing of population spread their language and culture through an aggressive migration and assimilation of native elements. Now, a piece of fun trivia I found while reading Herodotus. Regarding their origin, the Sintians considered themselves the most recent race of the area. According to them, the first man to be born on the country was someone named Targitaus, the son of Zeus with the daughter of the Borysins River. The Borysins was a river god of Scythia in northeastern Europe, modern Ukraine. Borysins River is now called Dnieper. While according to the Greeks, it was Heracles who first came to the country, then occupied by the Scythians, and with every successive Scythian king descending from Cetus, the son of Heracles. And so thus ends my first video. Bye bye.